This week we made 16 of the 100 recipes out of Persiana by Sabrina Gayor. Four mains, 10 sides, and two dependencies. Each dish took about two hours to make from start to finish and typically served six people at about $4.50 per serving. Sabrina Gayor is an Iranian-born, London-based chef and author. And Persiana is her debut cookbook, the first of five books that she's now written. She got her start in the kitchen teaching herself how to cook as a young child, but really dove into Persian food around her teens. But since Sabrina was raised in England, all of her dishes have a very distinct British style. She intentionally encourages readers to make these recipes their own, adding, removing, and replacing ingredients to fit your personal preferences. Ultimately, Sabrina's goal with this book is to encourage more people to make Persian food and show the rest of the world that Middle Eastern cuisine is uncomplicated and accessible. Persiana kicks things off with a meze and sharing plate section, and if there's one thing that Bryn and I love, it's an all-starters dinner. Meze as a meal. Naturally, this is the place for us to begin, and if I ever see a focaccia recipe, you better believe I'm gonna try it. Sabrina even made pairing decisions easier for us by suggesting multiple dishes to serve with it. Roll day one. It's day one cooking out of Persiana. We're gonna do a meze day to kick off the week. It's just a bunch of little plates. We've got the marinated feta, eggplant cremula, Persian herb frittata or cuckoo sabzi, and Eastern style focaccia. I think Bryn's gonna join me later, but let's get cooking. Successful. 20 grams of this or, hold on, I have to check. Two times three quarters ounces or 20 grams pack, it's a cilantro. Two times 20 grams pack so is 40, 40 grams. grams of cilantro. Okay. Decent. That's fine. There you go, 12 pieces like you said. How much is it? 125, exactly. Three teaspoons of... Oh, we are we're gonna be out of olive oil, huh? Yeah. I... Ooh, just shy. By a quarter. I'll run out and get some olive oil for us. <laughs> so far this is going super well for us. Swimmingly. My eyes are watering. I think this was a misread based on the photo. It says a shallow bowl or an airtight container. This baking pan is neither of those, but it does appear to be what the author used for their photo. There we go. Now we can get more of the marinade up, more of the cheese. Let it sit for 10 minutes in a warm place. Some extremely dense dough. There we go. All right, one hour. We're gonna do the sub scene next. This just all goes in with. Pour the olive oil and then fry it, fry it, fry it. Herbs and scallions, then add the turmeric. Then add the turmeric, yeah. Three to four heaped tablespoons. Um. Some eggs are just stubborn. I think I'm gonna need a whisk. This is also like the least efficient way to get smooth. Really, you only want a couple eggs in here at first and then add in the rest once everything is already smooth. Bar berries. The salt, when does that go in? Was that, that like a confirmed amount? It said salt to taste. Oh, Two really? tablespoons crushed sea salt. Wow, all right. That's so much. Yeah. It'll be well seasoned. 35 to 40 minutes. Eggplants are a little green. Are these nightshades? Let's, let's go to Google real quick. Not meant to be entirely green. It's not green. What's a normal amount of green? The most disgusting way you could get that tomato out of there. You fucking pervert. I don't know how else to get tomatoes out of this type you of- cut the other end so it's not a vacuum. Oh, that's a good idea. We got our bread all ready to go. 25 to 30 minutes. I've been so hungry. Me too. The bread's excellent. Mm -hmm. The eggplant, I think, could use more salt. She did give a lot of direction of just like season it as you go, but it's hard to taste it when it's that hot. I don't know. 
I always forget to taste it when I'm like sauteing stuff for some reason. So I think that could use a little bit more salt. That's on me, not on the writing. How's the feta with the bread? This is a very dense feta. It's like the Whole Foods brand, which is not my favorite. Very salty, very dense. It's mm -hmm. not chewy at all. Mm -hmm. The standout to me is not only do you have olive oil that's contributing a lot of flavor, and then you've got some grated garlic in there because we didn't want to buy garlic oil. I just kind of made my own. Right. Uh, we should talk about why we didn't want to buy garlic oil. Oh, it's maybe the most likely candidate for Bosch line. Not saying that people who make garlic oil are doing it wrong. <laughs> it just makes us nervous because it is so easy. Oh, it's just like, what's the point in potentially storing botulism right. versus just making it on your own? Like, who cares? It's so easy to do. Uh, the shallot is pretty neutral, as shallot tends to be, mm -hmm. but the pickled chilies, phenomenal. And I love all the herbs in it and everything. Like, this is a very good, simple crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. With the bread, too. Yeah. So good. Mm. Just hits. Mm-hmm. I think these dishes in general, they pack a lot of flavor, mm -hmm. but the nice thing is that everything is very well balanced. Like this can be a very intense dish, I think just mm -hmm. on its own, but you mix this with the bread and it's just like the harmony mm -hmm. of it is beautiful. Very strong start. I think the cremillo is a little bit sweet for my taste, but it's, it's really also bitter like sweet. bitter, bittersweet, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it uric acid that eggplant tends to have? Mm. Would yes. you like a sub -Z? I would like a sub -Z. It's a frittata, egg, lots of herbs. That's why it's green. So many herbs. Walnut. It's basically just egg, herbs. Walnut. Walnut and zeresh. Barberry. It is so salty. It is oversalted. It is really good though. Yeah. I think the salt wears on you over time. Mm -hmm. She called for two tablespoons of salt, which is, I was like, that's so much. Oh, two really? tablespoons crushed sea salt. Wow, yeah. all right. The salt is, it's overwhelming, but if I made it, I would just cut that in half and be perfectly happy because this is delicious. That's I think on the first bite, it wasn't a problem. I think it's just like, just like over time, it's like, whew. That's a lot of Starting salt. to wear down. It's so good though. Mm -hmm. Oh, when I get a barberry. I know. Barberries so are so good in it. Mm -hmm. And I like the crunch of the walnut. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything would be really spongy and samesy. But it's a nice textural mm -hmm. um, change. Still significantly different from the rest of it. I did that thing where I'm really hungry, so I eat really fast, and now I'm like... I'm so full. Mm. The bread, being a star of like multiple dishes, really works well too. Smash together. I think the bread's a smash light, regardless. Light pass, I think, on this one. Yeah. Light smash, but only because there's just a little bit too much salt. If there was less salt, that's a hard smash. Right. Or maybe if there's like yogurt or something to balance it out. That first day was a lot of work, so for the second we wanted to make things a little bit easier. But I just couldn't say no to that recipe for cello, a Persian basmati rice dish in the hopes that I could get a nice crispy tadig. Like the first day, Sabrina offers pairing suggestions, and in this situation, she suggests to pair her chicken with basmati rice. So winner winner chicken dinner, I guess? Here's day two. Day two cooking out of Persiana. Today we are making Persian saffron chicken, fennel, and barberry stew with Persian basmati rice or cello. Think of it like a tadik. It feels so good when you get the right size pot out. I can't describe that feeling. It's such a great feeling. Thirty minutes. We heat a large saucepan over medium heat. Fill the pan with boiling water. They don't have a photo of this on the other one, but they do have a photo of something similar on another page. So I think I'm gonna go for something kind of like that. Generous drizzle of oil. I think you use all of the butter. It says a couple of generous pats of butter, but she also measures out the amount of butter. And she doesn't talk about serving it with butter at any other point, so 
I'm just gonna assume that all the butter goes in on the bottom based on her writing. My scattered rice. Wrap the pan lid in a dish towel like this. I think this is what they want. So that's 45 minutes in the rice. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. Yep. Okay. I feel like this is just gonna fall out everywhere. Let's go for it. We got this. Oh. <laughs> Fuck, that's steamy. <laughs> oh my God, there was so much steam under there. <laughs> I did not expect oh, that. Oh, we got a little bit of color. A tiny bit of teddy. We got a little bit of color. Already broken up. Oh no! <laughs> I feel Rescue like mission. we should have gotten a like blade for this, like a little bit, little. Wait, higher this can't edge. be a two blade dinner. Little uh -huh. higher edge. This cannot be a two blade dinner. It's very crunchy. The rice, it's buttery, salty, and that's it. We eat so many stews with rice, and. We couldn't figure out what to serve the rice in, so we just put it in our like usual rice bowls. And so I'm like really tempted to just like hold my rice bowl the whole meal and like scoop stew into it. Yeah, she doesn't give a lot of direction on how to eat these things together. She just says served with basmati rice. So, okay, tell me what you think of the chicken. The the broth is quite neutral. Chicken's pretty unseasoned. With the barberries, it actually kind of reminds me of some Oh. Korean soup, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got like a medicinal thing going on. I wonder if the saffron is giving you that. I think maybe a slight bitterness from the fennel too. Mm. It's very delicate flavors. Mm -hmm. I think it could use a little bit of seasoning, of but chickens do. Yeah, it's I do nice. think it could use a little bit of extra salt. But this really gives me samgyetang vibes. I bet if we let the sauce reduce in the, the stew, the soup, um, it would develop a bit more flavor. Yeah. You'd, you'd get a little more flavor. It doesn't. <laughs> I hate when you do that so much. I'm sorry. I was really hoping we would get a little bit more of the cumin flavor coming through. Mm -hmm. Or that cinnamon flavor. There's cumin in here and cinnamon. Yeah, but I would never know. Not getting much of either of those things. Mm -hmm. A lot of chicken flavor. It seems like a lot of the flavor is diluted. So I think mm. maybe that's why I was saying. I wonder if it's supposed to be a bit thicker than this. Do they have you using chicken stock? Mm -mm. What's the base? Just saffron. Hmm. Do they have you using a specific amount of water? That might be the problem then. Yeah, it just had to fill the pot. Cover. Mm. The chicken. So it's really depending on the size of the pot then too. Mm -hmm. The meat on the chicken just completely falls off. Mm -hmm. Just fully. I can just scoop it off with a spoon. Yeah, everything cuts with a spoon. I don't even need the fork. It's, a, it's just a very mild vegetal soup. It is very mild. As always, love the little pops of acidity from the barberries. Yep, the barberries are clutch. It needs quite a bit of salt, honestly. Once it's salted, it's much better, but it's still like pretty neutral. Mm -hmm. Snow day or like oh, sick day yes. kind of meal, sick right? Sick day, snow day. Yes, perfect. Wonderful. I think the hardest part of cooking the chicken though was um, she tries to get you to get color on the chicken after you've already kind of like, not caramelized, but started to uh, get your onions translucent. So it's quite wet. So you have to throw the chicken in with the onions. Mm -hmm. And then also you wanted those to brown, but you, but I had a hard time not burning my onions. Mm. I feel like we see that a lot in cookbooks that are really trying to avoid complexity. Mm -hmm. They just skip steps. So you get like worse outcomes right. to have a step less. When you get a hit of that barberry though, it's so nice. It's like a little pop of acid. It's very tasty. Mm. Both of these things together are very mm -hmm. tasty. She says that you can make this just with plain basmati. I do think that that really levels it up. Mm -hmm. Chill out. Yeah. Smash on the combination. Light smash individually. Especially if you have extra salt for the stew. We went through an entire salt container in the last two days. When I was planning out my menu, I stumbled on her leg of lamb recipe, took one look at that crust, and decided that's absolutely something that I'm making for this review. But while I dreamed of going hands-on and really digging into that leg of lamb like an absolute cave woman, we could only find boneless cuts, unfortunately. If I do this recipe again, and I'm absolutely going to, I'm gonna try to do it when I can find a bone-in leg of lamb so I can give it the full Flintstones treatment. Enjoy day three. It's day three cooking out of Persiana. Today we're making the Mishuya style lamb leg with cumin dipping salt and turmeric and cumin roasted potatoes.
I'm assuming that the salt and the pepper both go in here. That seems like a paste. So this has to go in the oven. Five hours. One hour down. Hour two. Hour number three. This is the end of the fourth hour. We're going on basting every 30 minutes. Going on to hour five. I'm also going to get the potatoes going. Here we go. I was trying so hard not to touch the, to the potatoes because there's turmeric on them. And then one of them fell off while I was putting them in this bowl and I just like grabbed it and threw it in. And now my fingers are yellow. So that's been fun. It's dry. Five hours, huh? Five hours. She didn't give any other signal either. It was just like five hours should be falling off the bone, but because we don't have a bone in this, mm. it's hard yeah. to tell. That's not bad. It is dry, Yeah. but not terrible. I've had drier. Okay. I tried like my best to baste it. With a brush. I tried to use a spoon like halfway through, but it wasn't releasing enough juice, so I couldn't gather enough to make the spoon effective, hmm. you know? I would expect this to cook in about two hours, max. Hmm. So this is an interesting one. Yeah. Either way, like, I do think it tastes good. Yeah, the flavor it's, is great. It's just the uh, moisture problem. That easily, easily can be fixed. An hour per pound is crazy. Watching a temp would be a good move. I would say that's the best move in general, but yeah. you know. The potatoes with it are excellent. It's a great choice. Mm -hmm. They're oh, so spicy. punchy, so punchy. I think this is really like a perfect example of where signals would save the recipe, full stop. Yes. I don't think this is bad. I still think this is actually a smash. It's quite good. It's just the texture. Right. I mean, I'd be happy to try this again. Mm -hmm. With the potatoes too, I think I would have something fresh on the side because it is, it's a very heavy dish. Hmm. Like some sort of salad or like a yogurt thing on Something the side. to brighten it up. Something to give it a little bit more brightness because yeah. it's very, very like warming spices. It's rich though. It's nice. For me, saying just like carte blanche, cook something that is not a braise for five hours is very high risk. The flavors of the crust, there's cumin in there. Yeah, so it's like cumin. Salty cumin. It's flavor. almost all cumin. Yeah. Oh man, those potatoes hit. They're spicy. There's cayenne pepper on them. Mm. It's great. Yeah. Very tasty. We can easily resolve the timing issues. I think overall this is a smash. Even if this one didn't turn out perfectly, I would definitely make this again. What? Our lips are all yellow now. Most of the recipes featured in this book look elegant and beautiful. The Kofta Kebab, on the other hand, with its store-bought tortillas and simple dressing of yogurt, onions, and parsley was a little bit underwhelming. However, Sabrina suggests pairing this with Jujik, a tzatziki-like cucumber and yogurt sauce, and it's hard for us to say no to that. It's day four, cooking out a Persiana. Today we're making the Turkish Adana kafta kebabs with Shirazi salad and Jujik. That's yogurt with cucumber, garlic, and dill. One fat garlic clove. What if I do two not so fat? Squeeze out some of this excess moisture. Mm. Start it on the salad. Woo! I'm gonna get a bigger bowl. Got our 
salad. Time to make the kebab. says really need this part, like bread. Everything everywhere all at once, you know? The hot dog fingers, that's how I feel right now because these gloves are coming off and so my fingers are all like long and saggy. <laughs> all right, yeah, we're gonna do the patties for these. Uh, I want them to be a little bit smaller. She doesn't give a lot of direction on like weighing it or anything like that, it's just a handful. But they're gonna be in wraps, so I kinda want them to be like a little bit smaller. I need another tray. I'm thinking that much oil for these. Sure. I don't think they need a lot. Probably not. Yeah, I'm they're, saying they're like pretty wet. They're sticky. Mm. Over medium heat. It doesn't look as pretty. I was trying to copy the thing that she did, but. Smells very good. Good. Hopefully it tastes good. I was a little bit concerned about the amount of time that these. The straight up flour tortillas is. Yeah. Not something I've seen before. Yeah. She said you could use whatever bread you wanted. She wasn't specific. Well, she said tortillas, she right? She uses tortillas. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Kofta got a little bit cold, but. Yeah. Red bell pepper. Yeah. In the meatball. Mm -hmm. Takes over, honestly. Hmm. I'm getting a lot of red bell pepper as like a core flavor. The meat's much more neutral compared to it. Huh. Then the Aleppo, I get the Aleppo so next. I'm getting a lot of onion. There's a lot of sweet components. Mm. There's a half a red bell pepper. It's pretty good though. The Jejik kicks ass, dude. What a great combo. It's lamb and mint. There's no mint, it's dill. Really? Yeah. I just got like a little corner of it and I was like immediately like refreshing compared to ah, everything else. I really like this. This is good. Mm -hmm. The kofta is not overcooked. It looks like it is. Mm. And it worried me when it was on the skillet and getting that dark. Very charred on the outside, but like Moist on the inside. Mm -hmm. Basically the opposite of last night's lamb. I thought the tortilla would be more distracting, honestly, but yeah. it's pretty decent. Heating the tortillas before mm -hmm. you put everything in is really helpful too. So nice and malleable. Mm -hmm. There are not gonna be many leftovers tonight. Yeah, these are great. I do think that the jajik, that is very, very helpful for this. Mm -hmm. Necessary. Yeah. She does say you can just use Greek yogurt, and it looks like she does in her photo, but I think that really like the herbs are... takes it up a notch. <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, it's nice and balanced. Good textures, good flavors. I would happily make these again. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. Oh, salad. Yeah, it's like kachumbar or kachumbari, mm. but with uh, pomegranate, mm. which is a nice addition. It's sharp. It's spicy. Pico de gallo with fruitiness, mm. but very oniony. There is yes. There's quite a bit of onion in this too. Mm -hmm. I would say the onion should be the last one to go in because this is uh Oh, it's just a little too oniony? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. It had a chance to spread out. Ah, I see. So it's just That's onion on everything. If you're doing this ahead mm -hmm. of time, throw the onion in at the end. Mm -hmm. This onion really got in there and said, this is our place now. <laughs> I want another one of these very badly. Go get it. All in all, heart smash. My final day was all planned around making her sabzi polo recipe. Sabrina suggests pairing this rice dish with fish, so her cotton tamarind was a no-brainer. Herby rice plus herby fish plus a dill-based dessert, sign me up. Okay, it's day five, the final day working out of Persiana before the review. Today we're gonna be making the cod in tamarind, cilantro, and fenugreek sauce, also known as galia mahi. We're serving that with Persian herb rice, or sabzi polo, and lacy saffron fritters with pistachio and dill sugar, or zulbia. is all prepped, we can start prepping the rice. Three, oh, 500 grams of basmati. Rinsed and we'll soak that rice. Finally slice the herbs and scallions. What other herbs do we need? Picking the leaves off of cilantro. Mm. Tear off some 
parsley leaves. Last thing fritter is prepped up. Literally just finished prepping hey, everything. Perfect timing, that Brent. Okay, I think the first thing that has to get started is the rice. Gotta get this butter distributed. Didn't it say cook it for eight minutes and then reduce it? Definitely didn't say that. Mm. So it's time for eight minutes. Cut each cob bone into two inch pieces and lay them on top of the sauce, putting just enough of the sauce over them to barely cover each piece of fish. Three. A little yeah. charred. First attempt. I don't know. I see a little man or a woman. Somebody running. Second attempt. I think that's it. Yeah, you can start with dessert if you'd like. To me, they kind of taste like like crispy sugar donuts. They're sweet Cheetos. Sweet Cheetos. Yeah, that's a great way to describe them. It's one of the better cods I've had. You really get that fenugreek. Yeah, the fenugreek would come through. Love that. And the garlic. Mm -hmm. Um, The cilantro, a bit. It's like a chill background cilantro. I mean, hmm. spicy. The fish is cooked perfectly. Yeah, the fish is cooked really so well. So tender. This was another one I think where she just gave you time, right? She didn't mm -hmm. give you like, an so she's really nailed down the timing on this one at least. Well, I think because it's such a gentle cooking method, mm. like it's not gonna get like, Rubbery, right? So I think this. Yeah, I think it has a lot of um, safeties built in. Mm. It's a wet cook, braise, simple. I think it, like my temp got away from what the recipe intended. And it's still just fine. The tamarind is interesting. That like acidity hits. I don't taste the tamarind as much. It's very sour to me. It's very light flavors though. It's not really like intense one way or the other. Mm -hmm. I think all it's those. It's like it's just herby. I think it could have been reduced more. Simmered a little bit, uncovered just to get the wheat starch to hydrate. Mm that's in there. Mm -hmm. All the flavors are concentrated in the onions. When you get a bite of onion, it's intense. Everything else is like very neutral. Yeah. So that's like the challenge and part of why I would like it to be a bit more consistent. Mm. I think in general, everything here could use a little more salt, mm -hmm. but I'm really glad that we did this fish with this rice because I think the extra herbiness is just, mm -hmm. it's nice. It's not too much. It's not overpowering either way. They complement each other really mm -hmm. well. Some herby rice, some herby fish. I think the sweetness of the sauce really works well with the slightly overcooked tadig. And that is, like, it just adds some roastiness that is, mm. like, really nice. With the fish, she also says that you can just do plain rice with it. I think plain rice would be just fine. It would soak up all of the sauce and the juice and be really nice. I do think going the extra mile and making the polo was it. Very cozy. Actually, I want to give these a little more sugar. They're way better this way. I mean, it's a funnel cake. But the, the pistachio and the dill tweak it just enough that it's, like, a unique experience. If you make the donuts, use a little squeezy bottle. Yeah, now I'm really enjoying this. It'll work. I don't usually like a lot of sugar, but this really needs it. Oh, so they're just little yeasty fritters. Yeah, I could eat like a pile of these now. So after a week with Persiana, how'd we feel? This book is quite accessible. The only special tool I was asked to use all week was a food processor, and even that was only suggested to speed up the process of chopping a bunch of herbs. Sabrina does her best to make the ingredient list easy to find at your local grocery store. But if you plan to make her cotton and tamarind, and I suggest you do, you might want to order some fenugreek leaves ahead of time depending on where you live. Overall, Sabrina really goes the extra mile to get you in and out of the kitchen with some great food as fast as she can. Alternatively, you can yeah. just use plain rice for this. Alternatively, you can just use plain yogurt for the- She really leaves a lot of open doors, I noticed that. So we're giving accessibility an eight. The design of this book is a little bit above average. The photos are elegant and looked undeniably like our final outcomes. The recipe layout may be focused too heavily on keeping everything on a single page, which left some of the instructions feeling a little bit cramped. But other than having to backtrack every once in a while to figure out where we left off, it was pretty easy to follow. Right. Herbs and scallions, then add the turmeric. Then add the turmeric, yeah. 
Design gets a seven. The flavors were mostly great on their own, but the real magic was in the pairings. So like the fish by itself, light smash. Rice by itself, light smash. When you put them together, smash. The only big issues we ran into were in the quality of our ingredients, especially with the Shirazi salad. The tomato quality that we had is a little bit mealy. And that long roast time on the lamb made it pretty dry. For me, saying just like carte blanche, cook something that is not a braise for five hours is very high risk. The combination of textures across the week was a real standout and something that we rarely get in cookbooks. But we saw a lot of crunchy. A lot of crunchy. We saw some light and crisp. We saw some like bouncy meatballs. We saw like mm -hmm. most of the textures are Excellent, this like mm -hmm. nice tender fish. Everything was either balanced itself or had a suggested pairing that balanced it out perfectly. So flavor gets an eight. Cookbook writing is hard. And because Sabrina is looking to find those shortcuts to make it easier for home cooks to get started with Persian food, she's made her job even harder. Overall, we ran into very few hiccups with the writing, but there were a couple of times that we got confused. Cut in half and thinly sliced into, wait, a half a large onion cut in half and thinly sliced into half moons or wish that she'd given us some signals along with the cook times. An hour per pound is crazy. Watching a temp would be a good move. I would say that's the best move in general, but yeah. you know. But on the other hand, we had cases where the timings were spot on and we were pleasantly surprised. The kofta is not overcooked. It looks like it is. Mm. And it worried me when it was on the skillet and getting that dark. Very charred on the outside, but like moist on the inside. The issues we ran into were minor and anyone who's cooked longer than a year could work around those pretty easily, but we do like to account for beginners too. So writing is going to get a straight down the middle five. Out of the 16 dishes we made from Persiana, nine of them were smashes and many of them we plan to revisit. When you inevitably come back to this cookbook, what's the first thing you're gonna make? Probably the kofta. Those are good ones. I'll probably come back to a lot of the rices too. It might be helpful to have two people in the kitchen if you plan on doing a meze dinner like we did, but overall the dishes were easy to make and tasted incredible. There are not gonna be many leftovers tonight. Mm. The barberries are clutch. The long roasts like the lamb and the chicken were so simple that I was actually able to get most of the editing done for this video while they were cooking. Value is gonna get a nine. And that brings our initial cult score for Persiana to 7.4. Not every recipe was a smash on its own, but Persiana is a masterclass in pairings. And Sabrina really drives home how an extra bunch of herbs or a textural contrast can make a meal excellent. <sighs> Let's eat some food. I'm, I'm so hung hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs>